Hello everyone. Welcome to the Cyberman show. Today's topic is NGSIM or next generation SIM. So I've been working on this technology for some time and this word uh, started to come up uh, in my circle and in the media uh, in last 2 to 3 years and now the technology is kind of shaping up uh, it is getting enough attention. So I thought it's time to break it down for all of you. So what is NGSIM? So it's an evolution of traditional SIM which is security information and event management systems and it is designed to overcome legacy limitations and adapt to modern cyber security challenges. Now that's the definition but to understand SIM or NGSIM you have to first understand about the traditional SIM so let's go into uh, the background okay. So SIM as I said is security uh, incident and event management platform and it's part of uh, threat detection and response technologies it has existed uh, for over 30 years uh, there were a bunch of companies that don't exist anymore and i was lucky enough to work on those technologies uh, i remember working uh, on my first siem product way back in 2007 now the key function uh, of siem is uh, can be bro or it can be broken down into few stages one is data collection so what it does it it, it has collection mechanisms to pull or collect data from various infrastructure sources like your servers uh, your routers switches your cyber security infrastructure including your firewalls proxy uh, email security etc so it collects log data from various sources then it parses and normalizes that data essentially understanding what each field in the incoming data event looks like so example a field in log data uh, with which has ip address can be source ip or destination ip so what you do is you perform a process called parsing where you map incoming event and the field within it to a database in the sim application okay then once the data is collected uh, after parsing uh, normalization happens this is when you are you've done the mapping with the schema uh, and then the process of threat detection happens this is where uh, typically in any sim platform a traditional sim platform uh, an analyst would write rules uh, correlation rules as we call them essentially a set of policies uh, or possible combinations of uh, malicious bad events so example three failed logins followed by a successful login could mean a possible brute force attack so this is a very simple correlation rule and it has been there for ages uh, then uh, what happens is the analyst will typically uh, keep tuning the system okay and whenever there is an alert it goes into the case management system for threat response so most of these platform had a rudimentary case management system Uh, where the uh, alert or the case can be assigned to the analyst for investigation and response okay a response could mean uh, calling the owner of the server checking if there was a malicious activity in that target server and then deciding the course of action the sim technology was also used for compliance so one of the things was log management which is retaining log for a specific period of time depending on the requirements for example pci as a regulation requires you to retain logs for one year um, it means sim system can be used or sim system can be used to retain that log for one year and then reporting for compliance example pci wants you to track all configuration changes made in your infrastructure track all login happening to the servers under Uh, PCI scope and submit that report to the auditor. So essentially, the job of the SIM system was threat detection and compliance. Or, uh, okay, uh, and that that's how these were designed. And they typically existed as on-prem solutions or dedicated platforms or dedicated services on cloud infrastructure. Uh, so the vendors who used to provide, or some of them are still there, they still provide that service where they would carve out a dedicated instance. and uh, put it up on their cloud so that the end user of this system doesn't have to give server space or doesn't have to manage the infrastructure required for this application now the players who've been existing for for some time 
are Splunk, IBM, Curadar, Microfocus, Microsoft, uh, Central, Examium, including Logarithm now, Elastic, RSA Net Witness, etc. Now, if you look at the annual revenue uh, total of top three vendors, that is IBM, Microsoft, and Splunk, it grew from $597 million in 2021 to $916 million in 2023, which is a CAGR of 24%. So it's extremely large market, multiple players, highly competitive, and it's been there. Okay. Now, in spite, of, in spite of the fact that it's been there for some time, there are issues in this platform, or at least the traditional version, which is, one, it was never designed for taking logs from SaaS and PaaS or infrastructure as service. So anything which is cloud-driven, it was very complicated to integrate them uh, with such application. Second, the security monitoring capabilities were limited. Uh, the, you know, because they were typically on-prem, or had were part of a dedicated uh, setup in the cloud, uh, it was uh, uh, hard to scale or increase the capacity. Okay, uh, highly dependent on humans for tuning the rules, and of course, led to a lot of false positives. Uh, performance was also a problem. Okay, the you will have to run queries to for a report, and it could take hours sometimes to get uh, simple things like show me all logins for 5,000 users uh, in span of last five days. Okay, so those things were highly performance uh, uh, related. Okay, Now, the market itself has been uh, there okay, for a long time. The, the market uh, size reached $6.4 billion in 2024. Uh, and it is supposed to go to $15.1 billion by 2023 at a CAGR of 9.54%. Now, this is from uh, a analyst called uh, IMAR Group. Another uh, report from uh, Gartner says that the market grew from five, around $5 billion in 2022 to 5.7 in 2023 with an annual growth rate of 13% uh, compared to 22% in the last year. Okay. And this is as per Gartner's. And the Gartner hype cycle for security operations in 2023 also stated that this technology has reached the plateau of productivity. Now, this essentially means so far is that same technology has been there. There are issues, but the primary purpose of this technology has been third detection and response along with compliance. Now, while the I've listed on all the vendors, or most of the common vendors who have been there, um, I didn't want to exclude, exclude anyone, but these are the top vendors I have I've seen across in my career. Of course, there are markets where you have, would have different vendors like in US or Europe, depending on who's uh, local in that geo. However, in 2023-2024, new vendors started to come up in the market. Example, Cisco acquired Splunk for $20, $28 billion in 2024. AT&T's one of its former Alien Vault SIM assets into a company called Level Blue in 2024. Examine merged with Logarithm, Palo Alto launched XIM uh, in 2022 for their SOC platform, and then they acquired QRock assets from IBM in 2024. CrowdStrike also acquired a company called Hume and launched a new platform called Logscale uh, for this use case. So traditional vendors have existed, and new vendors started to come up because this market is has massive potential. Okay, now while this was happening, all this was leading uh, towards the evolution of this platform. Okay, so with that, let's get into NGSIM. So, in the NGSIM world, you know the concepts remain the same. Okay, so example, the data collection you still collect logs from infrastructure, uh, your traditional infrastructure, as including security. But the collection methods have now increased. So uh, beyond syslog, ODBC, uh, file-based collection, agent-based collection, you also started supporting Kafka, uh, data pipelines, JSON formats, APIs, proprietary method, REST, Socket, GraphQL, and SOAP, and you know anything proprietary, because these platforms are much more agile. They are based on cloud instead of on-prem. They are cloud-native. That means adding new features, uh, Scaling, uh, performance, all those things are not a limitation anymore. Of course, then there is data parsing and normalization. The concepts still remain the same. And uh, 
threat monitoring has improved. So beyond offering the rule-based system, now these platforms offer uh, ML or machine learning oriented uh, system, uh, based uh, analytics and they provide tons of ML models out of the box. So the requirement to fine tune the uh, rules uh, continuously is not that, uh, uh, not much needed, okay? The ML models are self-learning. Of course, in the threat response category, the platforms have now started to offer native automation capabilities. So instead of relying on a third-party ticketing system for uh, case management, all these platforms will uh, now offer native workflows and in some cases full source capabilities in the same platform. And there is better collaboration between analysts and uh, existing tools. For example, you can now, uh, as an analyst working on this NGSIM platform, you know, uh, send a message to uh, another person on Slack using SIM console and then you can collaborate together on Slack by starting a new channel and that channel can be used as uh, a discussion point or a container for uh, carrying out investigation on a particular case, right? So these things are much more agile. Okay. Now these are the th things, right? So if you look at what has happened is one, the it has evolved in terms of supporting more data collection methods. Okay because it cloud uh, host or cloud native the performance limitation the scalability limitations are not there anymore it means if i have to add a new uh, site new storage capacity i don't have to wait for license to get acquired or infrastructure to get acquired from a vendor and then add it it's all dynamic in nature you are just uh, you know paying for it as you go and case management capabilities are much more evolved now the differentiating part is how AI is being used in this platform. So one, as I said earlier, there are tons of out-of-the-box models. Everything is mapped to MITRE's techniques. You can also get your uh, custom models. So let's say you have models that you are familiar with let, and you're testing them on your Jupyter Notebook. Some of these platforms allow you to test your own models. Okay. Second, AI is heavily used. So AI is now used in incident prioritization. That used to be manual in traditional SIM. Incident summarization in human uh, language, making it easy for analysts to learn about the product or the incident. Explainability, so if an incident is prioritized, it will tell why it prioritized, okay, what was the reason. So example, this in, in the AI might tell you that the reason I've, I have uh, called out this incident is because I found multiple alerts within it that one ne I've never seen before for this user or for this entity. AI is also helping in content creation. So some of the platforms I, I have seen, they are talking about creating parsers, creating queries using the Copilot, then recommendations. So the AI can now recommend uh, playbooks uh, or actions for an incident uh, that has been flagged in case you haven't tagged anything. Then the playbook uh, can suggest queries. So I've seen Copilot demos where you type the name of the user and the, the uh, Copilot can now suggest you that what is it that the you can potentially run as a query for against this user for completing your investigation or for doing threat hunting okay and then of course the full source capability so in the same interface you can write the incident detection logic or you see the incident detection logic uh, and then the corresponding uh, playbook and it can be a multi-step uh, playbook uh, which it could be fully automated or hybrid in nature where it requires and uh, analyst to take some actions while it automatically does certain uh, actions that you know are of uh, a repetitive category okay so if i have to summarize next generation sim is the is a modernized version of traditional sim it offers continue it offers significant in improvements in the threat detection accuracy incident response speed as well as operational efficiency eventually it reduces your mean time to detect mean time to respond that's the gist right so your ngsim should help you reduce mean time to detect and mean time to response and that's the takeaway for you okay and how is how is that done is using ai capabilities now uh, the key the key takeaways for me one this technology is going to stay massive money is going into it by large vendors as well as new startups um, and then if you have an opportunity, go ahead and learn it. If you are in cybersecurity domain, go ahead and learn it uh, because of the way platforms are working. Uh, if you heard my uh, last podcast, 
the way platforms are evolving everything is go- uh, getting better integrated data pipelines uh, user interfaces data lakes they are all getting consolidated so this technology will only help you with your career okay with that thank you so much i'll see you next time and if you have any suggestions on new topics please do reach out to me on my blog so i have a corres- uh, i have a f- uh, corresponding blog so whatever i'm presenting on podcast also has a uh, view on my blog on substack under the same handle the uh, cyberman uh, substack.com okay uh, with that thank you so much i'll see you next time